So now that we, we kind of found a method of at least somewhat, I'll put this in quotes, fix the problem, it doesn't really fix the problem, but it is a way to kind of compensate for the problem. So the cause of the problem, though, is something that still needed to be investigated, and that's what I'd like to do next. So I asked a number of questions, um, and the kinds of questions that I asked John revolved around the, the darks, the flat darks especially, and the, um, the flats themselves. So let's just look at some of these calibration data. So here, I'm just going to load the, the masters because that will be good enough. Um, I'm going to load the original master flat here. So in the original master flat, you know, you just want to be sure it's the same time, uh, excuse me, the, yeah, roughly the same time as those uh, flat darks. We also need to be sh certain that the, the values here are what we would expect in a flat field image. So all of that passed the test. And the, the value itself, 0.4, whatever, it's all great. I mean, it's just, I just can't see anything wrong with that. Now, I did the same thing when I looked at the dark here. And then I looked at this master flat dark, because this is the 1.08 seconds. And I noticed that if I roll my cursor here around the 180 second exposure, and I look at the values, the values are roughly 0 0.003. But when I did the same thing on a one second exposure, the values are 0 0.011. Let's look at that again. The longer exposure has a smaller number than the shorter exposure does by a lot. That's not a small amount. That's a big number. That's a big change. That to me was a red flag. And so what I needed to determine was, you know, when you use a CMOS camera, one of the things that in general you want to do is to avoid a certain kind of nonlinearity of that electronic signal and also avoid um, the fact that CMOS chips, when you run them quickly for short exposures, can generate heat. Uh, you want your exposures for your flats to be sufficiently long. Now, I've read various, I guess, suggestions and advisories on this. Uh, but I'm going to make my own. Just steer clear of these short exposures with CMOS when trying to generate these kinds of calibration electronic signal images. So if your exposure, for example, is longer than, I don't know, 5, 10 seconds or something like that, this is of the galaxy or the nebula, make your flats have 5-second exposures. Try to generate flats with exposure times that are several seconds, a handful of seconds long. Now, a lot of people complain, but but I can take my flats in two hundredths of a second. Yeah, but then you run into other issues. You'll tend not to have, and there are a number of issues. It's not just this electronic signature. There's some other things too, with shutters and all kinds of things. So avoid all of that. All of that gets avoided if you can do your flats in a longer time. And then often people complain, but my panel is too bright. Well, it's usually not a case of the panel being too bright, as it is the setup might not be right, or people are using panels that are not actually for flats, all kinds of issues like that. But in general, you can adjust the flat panel so that its illumination, the amount of light that it's emitting, is faint enough that you should be able to get away with doing, you know, one, two, three, especially four or five second exposures, three, four or five second exposures, getting to this level of half of whatever the saturation level is, that should be very safe. Because again, the concern for CMOS is when you have very short exposures, and it could vary from chip to chip, um, you may run into other problems. So that was my suggestion, and I needed to investigate, you know, is this the problem, this flat dark? It's it has such a much higher value than the dark frame does. So then I asked the question, can you take some more of these, you know, flat darks for me? And it turns out that they, they turn out to be the same. 
But then what came up in the conversation is that it was mentioned that the dark frames are not something that had been taken recently. They're a bit old. They're on the order of six months old. So that raised another red flag for me because I know that CMOS chips and chips in general can change through time. So whenever you're having a problem, now if things are not changing, then you can continue to do your thing. But when things do change, then this is an area that you need to look at. One of the vulnerabilities is having stale calibration data. So the next thing that I asked was, let's get some new darks and see what kind of values and see how they work. Because when we're talking about this error here, the error of adding or subtracting can be on either side here. It could be the dark frame. It could also be on the side of the flat plus or minus thing here too. So it can be in either area. We know it's a plus or minus error, but it can be coming from either of those two areas. So John did provide some new darks. And I can show you one of these new darks. So this was taken very recently, not six months ago. Now we can do the same, and I'll actually call this one new dark. Dark here. If we roll the cursor across here, check it out. Look at those values. Those values are not 0 0.003, they're 0 0.01, 0 0.0, you know, something even a little bit bigger than what is this very short exposure here. Here's the short exposure, 0 0.011, 0 0.012. Here's the new dark, 0 0.01, 0 0.011, 0 0.012, and so on. That seems much more appropriate. It's only 180 seconds. There probably isn't very much dark current, which means that these frames, a one second exposure and a 180 second exposure, should be very similar. And this thing here is the whole problem. So that's the answer. The answer is it was an old dark that was not matching data that was taken more recently. Now, I couldn't say, assuming that the temperature was the same and all of that, why that is. I don't know why the camera would change so dramatically between darks taken six months ago and darks taken today, but it is measurably so. You can see it in the numbers right here, and that is the answer. That's why there was a problem. So the obvious thing to do is, of course, run our calibration of the data, combining it, and comparing to what uh, the difference, and I actually haven't done this, uh, the tuned answer, that is my just, you know, guess, compared to actually calibrating in a reasonable way. So I'm going to load this, and I'll go ahead and do this so you don't have to watch. Um, but I'm just going to load everything with the new darks instead of the old darks here, and uh, recalibrate everything and combine. Okay, so here's what things look like now. I, I loaded the light frames, the same light frames we've been using. I loaded the, the original flats again, so the flats are all there. And uh, I have my darks. You'll see, of course, I have the two different darks. I have the new 182nd darks. I still have the original, her original flat darks, which are not that old either. So those are okay, but of course, keep in mind that here, this time now, I did need to check this because I'm doing this from the raw files. So I need to calibrate with flat darks. I need to remove that electronic signature from these flats. Okay, so that should do everything I needed to do. Now the question is, do I wanna output this into a new spot? Now I think I can just overwrite those. Um, it just has the warning. Notice this time it's not complaining about masters and things, so no bias frames have been selected. So I'm just going to overwrite the files. And I'm saving the combined ones. OK, it succeeded. So I'm going to move on and uh, exit. Yep. Do like I did a moment ago. We'll do the uh, alignment of the data. Now these files should have the same name and should all be able to go into the same place. So that's OK. The only thing I want to do, though, 
is again just to be absolutely certain there is no mistaking what I'm doing I'm going to remove these older files from the directory so that when I do this operation I'll have new fresh files okay here is the moment here's the rejection I mean there's probably something in there but not much rejection high rejection low this is the one that we want to see because this is proper proper uh, calibration correction whatever so here of course is with the bad dark in place and that is considerably better now what is of just of curiosity it doesn't have any meaning other than it was curiosity here is what I did by adding a constant to the flat so it looks like I could have actually gone a little more <laughs> isn't that interesting so my tuned flat still a little dark maybe I could have gone yet a little more to get the proper thing but there you have it so that pretty much wraps this story up in terms of an understanding of number one what to do when you have a problem if you want to without even solving it if you want to try to compensate for it or use it as a diagnostic tool I demonstrated how to tune flat field images and then number two I also demonstrated the logic behind how you might investigate determining where a problem lies uh, with some understanding of what is being added and subtracted and looking at what you would expect to see in dark frames or biases and things like that so there is one more section that I'm going to add which harkens back to this idea that functionally these flat darks are functionally equivalent I'm not saying they're the same information but they are functionally equivalent to a bias frame in the way in which you can use them